Alrighty. Well, thanks, Josh, for that awesome intro. Uh, I know I could always count on you to make me look good. So, <laughs> well, hey, what an awesome conference it's already been thus far with some phenomenal messages. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm excited to sell and just flat out implement as much as I can um, from what I've learned here today. Now, you know, as I was preparing for this message, um, I was doing a lot of reflecting. And when I was when I was thinking about my message about finishing strong, um, I always think back to my toughest, you know, most challenging yet most fulfilling year of my life. And that was like Josh mentioned last last year, 2020. I'm sure we can all agree that um, in the midst of a pandemic and during a time facing a ton of adversity, fear, uncertainty, and much more that it can truly play a part in one's mental state and well-being. Now, to give you guys some insight here, you know, my goal last year was to see if I can go out, see if I can sell over $300,000, earn a company Rolex, um, work a show pretty much every single weekend, and to put all the pieces of the puzzle together and see if I can earn and win a silver cup. Well, you know, with all that said, it sounded like a pretty cut and dry, you know, a list of things that one would say is pretty attainable if you know you were to put in the work, the effort, all that. Um, but you know, once COVID hit, um, my entire business pretty much flipped upside down, and you know, it had had me questioning myself. It's like, is it all worth it? Like, you know, when the world seems like it's flipped upside down, everyone's against you. Mrs. Jones isn't picking up, and you know, nothing's going your way. Is it worth it? Looking back at it and, you know, even before this message, you know, my response is still the same. And that's absolutely freaking lootly because you never know unless you try and you always want to constantly keep challenging yourself as well, too. Now, I'm just going to briefly walk you guys through, um, you know, uh, my year last year and just kind of reflect on some critical key moments of last year and just kind of walk you through what happened. Um, and then we can follow up with some uh, big key, key points to this message as well, too. So, you know, once campaign two rolled around, that's when like, you know, everything started to settle down, places were closing and like, we didn't really know if we were gonna get an opportunity to enter, you know, a home to do demos and the whole transition of doing like virtuals uh, instead of in home was just something new to everybody. It was difficult. It was challenging to say the most part, um, you know and it really had me questioning if it was, you know the right time to really go after this, you know enormous goal. But what I found out was that if you commit, if you put in the time and you break down your goals, that anything's truly possible. Now, you know, for starters, I remember heading into campaign one, I was behind pace, felt super, super discouraged. I was sitting at about 55,000, 60,000 for campaign one. And for me, I feel like that's weak, but you know, for everybody else, it might be a little different. But for me, I just felt like I was super depleted and I wasn't performing at the level that I knew I was capable of performing at. Um, so it was time to just, you know, make some adjustments and reevaluate my goals. And then that's when campaign two rolled around. When campaign two rolled around, I just decided, you know what, it's time to stop messing around. Let's put it all together and see how this is going to work. Um, I remember talking to my manager about this the entire time, like, how are these like virtual appointments even going to work? Like, I'm so used to entering someone's home and just doing presentations and, and all that. And there was just so much uncertainty, so much, you know, so much in the air. But, you know, after a ton of failed attempts, I finally got this super awesome, nice couple to answer their phone. And they lived like four hours away. And we decided that we were going to do a Zoom virtual call. And I felt like a brand new rep again, like no exaggeration. I felt like a brand new rep answering their first ever appointment. It's like, you know, you ever, you know, it, this might be you, but it might be that rep who enters a home and like sells a trimmer and bonuses like a peeler or whatnot, you know, don't do that. But, you know, just an example. Um, but I, I remember heading into the demo and I was just sitting there like, you know, how am I going to make this work? But I went through the whole program. I followed my manual and at the end of it, I was fortunate enough to sell $2,000 on a cookware set. It was definitely eye-opening and uh, it was definitely something that boosted my confidence. Um, and I knew that this was just the beginning of something special. Now, you know, aside from all that, you know, it was, it was a time where, you know, my first virtual at that time was a success. I gained some recommendations, but, you know, I wasn't fully satisfied. I wanted multiple buckets to my business. So I decided to call past customers. I decided to, you know, 
dig deep into my previous branch territory, um, dug up some company leads and see what was out there. And fortunate enough, I found someone else to, to answer their phone. And it was a super nice guy. His name is Rob. Um, he lived out in a territory of my previous branch and he gave me the time of day. And this man, it was a successful business owner. He was also a State Farm agent. And he decided to invite me over throughout all the chaotic madness that was going on. And I remember, you know, just sitting in his kitchen. And I remember sitting down and just getting the opportunity to introduce myself, um, you know, get to know him and his wife. And the first thing I always do at a presentation is always, always, always talk about goals. And if you know me or you've ever seen me do a demo, the first page of my blue book is always me talking about goals and a bunch of reasons why I'm working really, really hard. Like I literally specifically write out specific whys and I'll highlight them, right? And I remember, and just to give you a brief overview, the goal every single time I tell people is like, I'm not trying to sell you everything Cucko makes Mrs. Jones. I'm just trying to do a good enough job so that way you like me and Cucko to tell some friends about me. But this isn't a recommendation stock or a selling talk just a little glimpse of what the goal she kind of entailed. But long story short, um, I went through the entire presentation. Um, I did a whole sharpening. They bought an upgrade and they provided like 15 fresh leads and it was super, super awesome. I felt like I was on top of the world, but that's not the reason why I'm talking about this specific service call because this will go down in history as the most memorable service call because it was in the peak of the summer and it was throughout my toughest year of my cutco career. We were going through the whole process of getting leads, finishing up his Siggy upgrade. And I remember, you know, him just giving me feedback and saying like, you know, you did such a good job. I love how you broke down, you know, your goals. Can you please go back to your main page again? And I go, yeah, sure. I caught something. It said on this, I think it was under, uh, under donate and uh, impress girl I like. Um, <laughs> it said, uh, earn a company Rolex. Is that what I, what I saw? And I'm like, yeah, it is. Um, it's, it's really, it's really important to me because, you know, Rob, everything's like crazy right now, as you already know. And I'm just, just working my tail off while other people are just thrown in the towel and just giving up. I really just want to go after this goal. And I just want to make the most of this year. And I remember, and I'll never forget this. I wish I was making this up. This man goes, what type of Rolex is this? And I go, I believe it's a, it's a Rolex Submariner. And he goes, is it this Rolex? And this man's wearing the same Rolex that I'm trying to compete for. And it blew my mind. It felt like it was just meant to be. But um, I remember just having a chat with them and just, you know, hearing his story of, on maybe he earning, you know, the same uh, Rolex through his company. But it turns out it was nothing special. His uncle's uh, Doug Collins, former Bulls coach. So it's nothing too exciting. But uh, <laughs> it was still a memorable demo because uh, it got me really excited because it was the first service call I did that summer. And, you know, it's something that we, you know, mutually talked about for, for quite some time. So, you know, at the end of the day, I'm just going to be very upfront. I could sit here for hours and talk to you about what, how my summer went and multiple stories. Long story short, the conclusion of campaign two, I had my best summer ever, 145,000 um, out, outperforming every single campaign that I ever did in my career, even beating every single branch office that I personally ran, which is Kind of bad, but you know, it is what it is. I'm proud of the results that I uh, was able to, to muster up. But you know, it was such a surreal moment and I'll never forget it. But remember, this message isn't about the progression of your year, it's how you finished. So let's move forward to, to campaign three. So here's how camp campaign three went down. So while all this was happening, campaign one ended, campaign two ended, having my best campaign ever. Um, and I was sitting at about 200 and I want to say 206, $207,000 um, for, for the year. And I felt like I was on top of the world. I felt like I had everything in the bag. Everything was just going my way. But then, you know, there was a point in time where things got, um, got a little tough because I kept thinking that I was going to hit all these goals at a rather quick pace. And I got complacent. So complacent, like Josh mentioned earlier, that you know, it was around literally this same exact time last year. It was Thanksgiving weekend. I was sitting at $251,000 and it, I looked at the time frame and I was like, oh, there's five weeks left. So essentially I got to sell 50,000 in five weeks. And to give you some insight, I've never sold 10,000 for more than one week, um, let alone five. So it was one of those moments where I was like, 
I'm so anxious. I'm so nervous. Like all the emotions were starting to kick in. I really didn't know what to, how to go about any of this stuff, but you know, to make all this stuff even worse, um, you know, time definitely was not on my side. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, I don't know what happened, but I think, um, you know, it ended on a positive note, like Josh said, four weeks left to go. I ended up one week into it with four weeks left to go with a solid goose egg week, definitely even more degrading that, you know, I wasn't able to sell, um, you know, anything in one of those five weeks, dwindling down to two weeks. I was at that point, $40,000 in deficit for my initial goal. Um, but all in all, with that final two weeks, I found the willpower. I found whatever it took within me to just reach out to as many people as I could, um, broke down my goals. And at the end of it, I was able to sell 45,000 in those last two weeks. I surpassed my best year ever, um, won a silver cup, won a company Rolex, all the things that will now just be a memory to me because it's not truly how you start, it's how you finish. Because at the end of the day, what I'll share with you is this, all the blood, even the blood that Mrs. Jones caused when she cut me, the sweat, <laughs> the tears, whatever it is, it was all worth it for that specific moment. I remember it all like it was yesterday, the ceremony, yeah, it still brings a tear to my eye, but you know, um, I, I truly will cherish all those moments. But you know, with that being said, um, what I want to transition to next is this, you all should have gotten a handout and the handout is pretty simple. It's the five main keys that I feel is super, super important to generating some great success. The first of which is writing down your goals and breaking them down into milestones. Now you can interpret this any way you, you'd like, but I'm gonna make this as simple as possible. Um, a lot of people who go out for goals, maybe it's a push goal, maybe it's a year long goal, it's a campaign goal, whatever it is, <clears throat> whatever it is, you know, everybody's different but always have a goals page. That's the simple one, right? When you're doing a demo, always have a goals page. Make Mrs. Jones really get to know you within that five minute time frame, right? Every single time I do a demo with people, like, you know, my town that I grew up in isn't very diverse. So, you know, for people who know me, it's easy. For people who don't, it isn't. So I'm gonna do my best to, you know, really impress Mr. and Mrs. Jones and let them know who I am and what I, what I stand behind and why I'm doing Cutco, right? Um, and these goals don't necessarily just have to be in your blue book. If you're super committed to your goals, write them down on paper, like tape them to your bathroom window, tape them in your room, tape them in front of your, you know, door, wherever you you're, you're always like near, it'll always be a reminder that, Hey, these are the goals that you really need to hit. Because if you fully commit, good things will typically happen. Like I mentioned earlier, it was about a $50,000 gap for a five week time frame. And uh, I, uh, I've been teaching this to my mentee, Quinton, and I've been teaching this to everybody who's like, Steven, who asked me like, hey, Steven, how do I hit this big goal within a short time frame? It's like the normal mindset to have would be, oh, 50,000 divided by five weeks. That's 10,000. If you divide that by, you know, 35 days, I'll save you the math. It's about 1,400, a little over 1,400 um, a day if you were to pace yourself but don't pace yourself because pacing yourself doesn't do you any good. You want to head into every single one of those say 35 days as this example entails, as if it was the last thinking day of your fast start, as if it was the last day of your push, as if it was the last demo of your career, right? You really want to execute and make the absolute most of it, right? What that looks like is really simple. Let me show you a quick graph. This isn't too extravagant. I quickly made this on a sheet of paper, but you can definitely make this on like a whiteboard, a billboard, whatever it is. What you're looking at is a bunch of numbers, 5,000, 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. There's 35 numbers resembling 35 days. Now, obviously, if I were to hypothetically hit all these numbers, it's going to well surpass the 50,000. But, you know, it challenges you because Maybe you hit your goal way before 35 days. Maybe you hit it way sooner, right? Every single time you hit a big day, you just put an X through it. Now, here's the deal. It doesn't have to be CPO related. It could be fire number. It could be number of recommendations, whatever it fully can be. It could be a number of demos you do in a day, something that keeps you on your toes and keeps on challenging you. Um, but overall, you know, a wise man once told me for key point number one here about writing goals and breaking down my milestones, a wise man in our own business, even as, as uh, once said, you are closer than you think. So key point number two, let's go to key point number two, creating urgency and taking massive action. 
So let me go ahead and talk about this. Creating urgency is super important and you know, taking massive action. I just wanna use the same example of, hey, I have five weeks to sell $50,000 but I remember a time where I was just super down on myself, super depleted. I'm like, how am I going to like accomplish this goal? And there's a lot of ways you can handle it. You can really fully commit by just having a simple eat, breathe, and sleep cut go schedule where nothing else matters. If you really wanted to go to the full out extreme, or, you know, you can challenge yourself by, you know, taking an extra hour, taking an extra day to book more appointments, adding more layers to your business, reaching out to past customers, um, you know, stepping outside your comfort zone. Like Lindsay mentioned earlier, which was awesome of a message about recommendations and just getting more phone numbers and building your names list is just simply calling people from your chickens list. Um, you know, using someone else's phone. If someone doesn't answer your phone, use someone else's phone to, you know, call them. They're not going to be like, oh, this got to be Steven calling me from a Nebraska number. Like, no, they're not going to know it's you. And like, it could be as simple as downloading a Google voice number. Keep challenging yourself. Think outside the box. Um, because at the end of the day, think of it this way. We always see reps do well. And we always see their extravagant results in regards to like how much they sell. But we don't see what happens behind closed doors. This is what you put in. This is the work that gets you the great results that you're looking for. And the question that I once received from an, a really great CSP in our business, and I still think about it to this very day, it's looking in the mirror and asking yourself, why not me? Because why can't you be great? Why can't you be the next Mike Dowd, Burt Wick, Seth Kinzer, whoever, right? Why can't you be great? Because I guarantee you, all they did was commit and put in the effort and the time and they are always learning and they're always growing their business. So creating urgency, taking massive action. Gratitude is the third one, right? Gratitude. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to be geared towards selling, but sometimes maybe it's okay to like just take a deep breath and just step away and just reach out to a loved one, a family member, a friend, and just reaching out to them and letting them know how much you appreciate them and how much you love them, right? It's ironic because like Thanksgiving's around the corner, you know, maybe reaching out to people that you're thankful for, right? These are just simple things to like keep you on your toes and realize what you're doing it for, because it could be a lot worse. We are provided this spectacular opportunity. And I think we're all here for a very, very particular reason. And that's, you know, what I, what my, my take on that is, but you know, when it comes down to gratitude and reaching out, don't just flat out send sales emails to customers. Start off with a gratitude email, like maybe this week, maybe after this, after today, reaching out to some of your top customers and showing them how much you appreciate them, how you're thinking of them. And then next week, follow up with a sales message. Because when you show gratitude first, it shows them that you're thinking of them. And again, this doesn't have to be geared towards selling. If you want to do this as a way to get more customers or more sales, you can do it too. But, you know, reaching out to them, letting them know you're thinking of them. And then next week, following up with a sales text or a sales email, and then following up a week later for um, a follow-up call. So just, you know, um, just a way to get more customers and more CPL. The fourth one is why selling in December matters. It not only builds momentum, but last time I checked, we all have an equal opportunity to win a trip to somewhere warm, right? Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. And I don't know about you, but by the time that trip rolls around, it's going to be way nicer there than wherever you're at right now. Okay. So, you know, outside of that, you know, don't be that rep that holds orders and think like, oh, this person's going to be buying a lot for me, but I'm going to save them for, for the push. Because here's what I'll share with you. After doing this for six years, it doesn't work well because you much rather sell to them now before the holidays. And then, you know, they might know other people that are looking for Christmas gifts, or, you know, they might give you a boatload of leads to, to, you know, work with and that you have more names than you could have possibly started with to begin the push, just several different um, ways to, to really boost your, your sales and your confidence and, um, you know, your everything else. Customer acquisition helps you get more customers, helps you more get leads. This all leads to more CPO. But as outside from that, you know, everyone on here, um, you know, has a different role, but, you know, there's always, um, you know, different roles for management opportunities, advancement, maybe there's an assistant manager role, a sales manager role, a spot on the events team that could possibly open if you go out and work your tail off because you're always interviewing and you're always, you know, your managers will always be, um, you know, seeing numbers don't lie, right? They always um, realize that if you're putting in the work that you're deserving of that 
particular you know role or whatever. And the last one that I uh, that I have on here is being coachable slash finding someone to hold you accountable. Okay, if you feel like you're in this alone, don't feel that way. Reach out to someone who's either doing better or has already accomplished the goal you've sought you sought out to you know to attain. Because when I was going for three hundred thousand, I was you know going after it left and right, and I'm like, I I need help. Five weeks here, I was reaching out to the elite CSPs and just reaching out to everyone that I could, picking their brain. And one of the biggest tips I got was manifesting that it's already been done. And I remember getting that from Burt Wicks. He said, manifest that it was already done because what happens when you hit your goals during a push? Like what happens with the other demos? Like, are they complicated? Are they tough? And I'm like, no, they're fun. It's like, yeah, they're fun, right? You don't have to feel like you're pressuring your customers to do whatever. You're just going into it, having fun and just like throwing out corny jokes and, you know, just having a good time and just manifesting that you're already there. But more importantly enough, reaching out to the people that, you know, have already accomplished the goals that you've sought out to, to, um, to go after yourself. Now, outside of that as well, too, always be open to feedback. And Josh mentioned earlier too, um, I've been mentoring Quinton, you know, this entire year, but mentoring is always important, right? If you want to get better, you always want to be learning. You always want to grow. You want to reach out to people that are offering those um, services. So that way you can learn from the very best in order to be one of the best. You got to learn from the best, right? So those are just some of the key components that I always love sharing with people. Um, but with that, the last thing I'll share with you is this, whether you're super far from your goal, really close to your goal or nowhere near your goal um, or somewhere in between. <laughs> um, I believe that if you implement one or two takeaways here from my call here today, that, you know, it'll help you drastically lead you in the right direction for success. And with that said, I hope everybody finishes off the year strong and builds momentum heading into new year. And hopefully I get to see you guys soon. Take care.